The 2018 Cambridge University Wireless Society, the expedition, was to the lush, tropical island of Montserrat in the Eastern Caribbean. Specifically, we went to Gingerbread Hill, well known among radio amateurs for being a rental shack that comes with its own motorised tower and three element beam. It really is a beautiful location. The two floors of the main building at Gingerbread Hill are rented as two separate villas, although radio amateurs are advised to rent both, as we did, to gain maximum use of the space. The ground floor is the two bedroom villa, which has a spectacular outdoors breakfast bar overlooking the sea. Inside there's a fully functional kitchen and living space and, as the name suggests, the two bedroom villa has one master bedroom with double bed and another room containing two smaller beds. Both rooms have ensuite bathrooms. Heading upstairs via the outside staircase we come to the heavenly suite, which we used as the radio shack. We'll come back to the shack in a moment, but first there's the balcony to admire, with its views over the coast. From the Heavenly Sweet Balcony, another staircase leads up to the roof, which is where the amateur radio tower is accessed from. On a clear day you can see Redonda, and beyond that on the horizon is Nevis, part of St Kitts and Nevis. It's obvious why this is such a well-loved holiday location for radio amateurs, particularly when you see the fantastic takeoff from the top of the mast. There is sea path to South America, Central America, and all of North America, with a reasonable takeoff to Europe too. So, what equipment did we take with us? Station 1 had an Elecraft K3 driving a Juma 1 kilowatt amplifier. Station 2, in the foreground here, was also a K3, driving an Elecraft KPA 500, and the third station, behind, was a barefoot K3. Logging was in wind test, and we had bandpass filters for the three stations. The shack was actually set up in the Heavenly Suites kitchen, which again had everything you need, although you do have to drive to the shops for food. Apart from the kitchen, the Heavenly Suite also contains another bedroom with double bed. Despite the low sunspot numbers, propagation from the Caribbean was amazing, allowing us to make over 7,550 contacts in five days. Papa 2, Mike Uniform Whiskey up 5. Oscar, Oscar November 7, Alpha Hotel. Yeah. Oscar November 7, Alpha Hotel 59. Yeah. 70, Victor Papa 2, Mike Uniform Whiskey up 5. Yeah. Florida 5, November Alpha Kilo 59. Yeah. Delta, thanks for 5 and 9, sir. You are 5 and 9, thank you. Thank you, Victor Papa 2, Mike Uniform Whiskey up 5. As is typical in this part of the world, the bands tended to die just after noon, which was a good excuse to have some lunch and to head to the newly built swimming pool to cool off with a nice cold beer. But there's another side to Montserrat beyond the beautiful northern part of the island. 
about two thirds of the country has been declared an exclusion zone where no habitation is allowed and visiting is restricted following a devastating volcano eruption in 1997 which buried the capital city Plymouth. The island is still rebuilding in the face of limited and slow funding and the fact that about two thirds of the population have emigrated. We were lucky to be granted a police escort to go through the barriers and into the exclusion zone. Driving through this area towards the remains of Plymouth is a surreal experience. It's over 20 years since the area was evacuated and it's amazing how much destruction has taken place in that short time. Out of the car it was clear how significant Plymouth had once been. It's very strange to think that this once bustling town is now silent. The level of destruction and the path of the volcano's pyroclastic flow and crater collapse are very evident from the remains of the jetty. The volcano towers above a place that had once thought itself to be in the shelter of any volcanic risk. To this day it's still considered too dangerous to walk in most of the town as the dangers from the rubble and anything hidden underneath have not been fully assessed. We were allowed to stroll with our guide through what was once the commercial centre of the town so long as we remained in reach of the car since the volcano is still active. It's particularly sobering to consider that the places we can now see are often the third and fourth floors of these buildings. The rest is buried in ash deep beneath our feet. Given the restrictions in Plymouth however we ventured to a less restricted area, the nearby settlement of Richmond Hill and the remains of the once luxurious Montserrat Springs Hotel. Although not in the direct line of the eruption, the hotel was affected by the ash to the extent that you have to crouch while walking through the ground floor corridors. The floor level is well below your feet. Watch out right there. Yeah. One more duck after the hair dryer. So just after the hair dryer, you have to duck once more. And then you can actually take a left into that first room and it's kind of interesting, you, that's as far as you really have. But it's only by going into the bedrooms of this once four-star Caribbean playground that the depth of the ash becomes clear. A desktop and toilet seat poke out of the ash and you realise you're walking above the beds. Outside our guide took us to the hotel's outside bar which looked out onto the swimming pool and the sea beyond. Comparing what is left with the photographs taken before the evacuation, this was clearly once the height of luxury, but no more. It was one of the better pools on the island. And the food was good too. This was an amazing and unforgettable visit to Montserrat. The radio contacts, fantastic surroundings of Gingerbread Hill and the devastating scenes in Plymouth made for a fascinating and enjoyable week. We were all too soon back on the ferry to Antigua and thence our flight home.